Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? E3 is just around the corner, so a bunch of Total War Three Kingdoms information has dropped. So in today's video, we're going to be going through what we know so far, having a bit of a discussion, and uh, just a general chat about Total War Three Kingdoms and the new features that they've announced. I'll put in the description below the blog post and some articles that I'm going to be like referencing throughout this video. So if you would rather just go and read these full articles, if you've got the time, I do recommend it. Also put in the description below a uh, trailer. There's been a new Total War Three Kingdoms trailer. So if you can't be bothered reading those articles and you just prefer to listen to some of the features that have been announced, this is the video for you. So guys, if you want to see more news type videos on the channel, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Alrighty, first up we've got some new screenshots as well, some new wallpapers have been released. Now I believe this is the first official gameplay screenshot we have seen, I believe. So as you can see here, three pronged attack, we've got trebuchets taking fire as well, we've got siege degradation as well, walls crumbling, fire and smoke. Uh, coming out of the settlement it itself. So this looks absolutely fantastic. Really reminds me of Shogun 2. I love the trebuchets, of course. However, if you divert your eyes to the far right of the screen. Now, I don't know, and it's really hard to speculate here. As you can see, that unit is on an angle. Is it going to be a one facing wall siege? I don't know. Um, I don't know if they've announced it. Is it going to be closer to Warhammer or like Thrones of Britannia with those sieges? We have seen previous images that they have increased the spacing for Three Kingdoms to let the units have better pathfinding. But at the moment, we, we can't see another attack on that far other side. However, this is the first sort of screenshot of a, in a siege from what I've seen. Moving on to another screenshot which looks to be within a settlement. A uh, nice vibrant red on the right. As you can see, there are peasants scattered all around the footpath. It does look likely they're going to be adding peasants. We did see them fleeing in the trailer. And uh, I do believe the same person that produced Total War Attila, like the head guy, is doing this as well. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But this is our first sort of view of the settlements and what they're going to be looking like within China. I really, it would be really cool if they bring back that view that they had in Rome 1, where you could view your city <laughs> and see the peasants and whatnot walking around. So it was only really those two screenshots that I thought was worth to sort of pause and have a look at and have a bit of analysis on. I'm sure a lot of you guys are a lot more keen-eyed than me, so let me know in the comments if there's something from those screenshots that you might have picked up on. But I thought they were worth to pause at. The others don't really overly interest me uh, too much. So we'll go through now some of the major and the minor announcements for Total War 3 Kingdoms. The major being the classic verse fantasy romanticized mode. They've also briefly talked about unit formations and agents as well, but I definitely class them as, as minor. Now some of you may, or may not know, that Total War 3 Kingdoms is going to be in heavily inspired upon, correct me if I'm wrong, Lao Gun Jun's romanticized tale of the Three Kingdoms. As such, when you start your Three Kingdoms campaign, at the main menu there's going to be a choice between either a romanticized fantasy mode or a classic historical mode. So, what are the main differences between the two? Well, it's all focused around warlords. Now, think for the romanticized fantasy Lord, think of Warhammer 2. Think of these lords that can mow down hundreds of enemies upon the battlefield as a single unit. They're going to have special abilities, passive buffs, debuffs as well. Compared to the classical historical mode where the general is going to be surrounded by his bodyguard and it's going to be more sort of down the historical events of previous total wars. The story and narrative focus on the campaign will shift as well accordingly. So for the fantasy romanticized version, they're going to be much more flamboyant in their narrative and storytelling, while the historical and classic goes down more the path of historically accurate events that happened in this time period. So I think this is perfect to accommodate both sides of the Total War spectrum. Some that prefer the Warhammer 2, the Warhammer style of these fighting lords, 
and of course the historical focus. So basically the choice between the two comes down to how your legendary lord, your lords will perform upon on the battlefield and uh, how the narrative focuses and, and is structured as well. In regards to battles, you're going to be able to choose three hero units to bring with you on the battlefield. And these heroes will have a very and a variety of recruitment options as well. There will also be a social dynamic between leaders as well. So you're going to have to keep an eye on that. Depending on who you bring to the battlefield, you can get positive or negative buffs in battle. Moving on now to some of the minor features that they've announced for the campaign, and I definitely think they're minor. So they're going to be bringing back unit formations, which they took out in the Total War games. So they're going to be bringing them back, and they plan to naturally introduce more army formations throughout your campaign. It kind of sounds similar to Thrones in Britannia in some respect. In that game, for example, in the tech tree, for you to get better quality swordsmen and get a better quality abilities, you have to recruit swordsmen. You have to recruit 10 swordsmen before you can get any better quality ones. So it kind of rewards the player from going down that side of the tree. So the example in Three Kingdoms that they're going to use is they really want Want to push the concept of characters in the game and they also want to bring the formations with these characters so this is the example they're using so by default your army could potentially could not form the diamond formation with this cavalry but by bringing in a high level strategist with you they're actually be able to give you those formations so it's kind of something you progress into as you're playing throughout the game so you're not going to be able by default have all these unique formations like the wedge depending on who you recruit and how you go throughout your campaign, will add these formations. Last but not least, they briefly talk about agents here, and you really can speculate as much as you want on this. This is what they have to say. Historically, agents would pile up over time and required way too much micromanagement, so a change has been long overdue. But it's too early to talk details just yet. So what that suggests to me is that they're probably going to limit the type of agents, I'm just speculating here, I, I purely don't know, and deal with the agent spam that was a problem back in like Rome too, as your armies would just get mowed down with spies poisoning your wells. So yeah guys, let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts and opinions about these features. Let me know your thoughts on the romanticized versus classic mode. What will you be playing once Three Kingdoms is released? I, I like the idea of what they've done. I definitely could see myself doing either campaign, but as a historical player, and I imagine a lot more of my subscribers have subscribed to the historical sort of Total War, I believe I'll be going down the sort of boring <laughs> classic route, not the colorful fantasy route, I think, but I definitely could see myself doing campaigns on either. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. So yeah guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more of these news type of videos, especially with E3 coming around the corner, if there is a certain thing that piques my interest and I would like to do a video on, I more than likely will. Go check out my Assassin's Creed Odyssey video as well. I quickly just released that going through my thoughts and opinions on Assassin's Creed Origin and the information and speculation and rumors so far for that game and more information will come out about that as well um, as we get further into the couple of days into E3. Go check out my Byzantine campaign as well and let me know what other uh, strategy games you want me to let's play. Unfortunately guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter and Instagram all in the description below. Highly recommend Twitter. Every single time I post a video, a tweet goes out. It's much more reliable than the YouTube sub box. These days to get all the notifications for the channel, you have to click the bell of course to join the notification squad. I do enjoy reading those comments.
If you guys would like to get yourself some cheap and reliable games, check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below. Maybe you can pick up a strategy game you haven't picked up just yet. Maybe Hearts of Iron, maybe Crusader Kings 2, maybe a Total War. Check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below for cheap and reliable games. I do recommend going and checking out the prices even. There's some really good prices on there. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much much for watching once again make sure to take care of yourselves go out and have a fantastic rest of your day my name is Ben CMC goodbye really close cinematic shots here pushing through the bridge oh look at <laughs> that was probably the shot of the video there